This is a Grande Pacific production. This will be part two on the Switch 8 and Switch It uh, explanation on hooking up in the NCE system and tying it in to your JMRI panel. So part one is located on my YouTube channel and it'll be under the uh, NCE playlist on how-to videos. Hope you've enjoyed uh, part one. Moving on to part two. All right, so this is the actual programming steps that you need to go through. Double checklist here, okay? The Rotary is set on zero for the switch eight. The shunt is in place and uh, it is covering both terminals, so this is a connection here. So we're ready to program that decoder for those two. For our purposes today, we're going to call it switch 500, okay? Because that way, if I end up with something left in the system, I don't have any switches in the 500. Okay, so this is what, you know, the typical screen we have a engine called up on here and uh, that you see when you start up. Now, we're after this button right here, Select Accessories. So we're going to pass Select Accessory. In my case, remember we talked about Switch 216. It, the last time we used this locomotive, uh, used this, uh, controller that was the last accessory we fool with so it's going to come up but we want to program accessory 500 so we're going to enter 500 and we're going to hit enter and now it asks me 1 N 2 R reverse normal or reverse I don't care what you do just hit 1 it's the we, it's not going that's not uh, whether you hit one or two is not going to set what to, which way this thing throws so all we want to do is get through the process so just hit one you have programmed the decoder it is done so next step is go over here and take the shut pin off now, for my purposes, I stick it back on one terminal so it doesn't get lost. So no connection right now. So this is done. The next thing I do is I take the screwdriver and I turn this off of zero. I go back over here to that first number, which like I told you, or whatever, just get it off of zero. Don't put it on one of the other one through seven but put it over somewhere else okay so now we're going to go back whoops excuse me and we're going to see if we were successful one way you can tell if you have power though i can tell you is if you go over here and you try to push on this machine i cannot move that with my thumb you see i moved it and it goes back to the stall position. Okay? We also want to talk about that too. So now we're going to go over here and we're going to hit select accessory. Let's assume that the number wasn't there. It came up some other number. So we're going to hit 500. Enter. And we have one or two. So we're going to hit one. Oh, look at that. It moved on the first try. Hmm, doggone it. That's good. Okay, people, watch the next little move. Because this one is not in the book. I've shown it a couple of times. And if you have, like me, my entire layout is uh, set up on the main line to be run by, I don't have panels or anything, so you run it by your controller to throw switches. If you think about what you're doing when you come in and out of places and you have to throw switches, if you don't get in a rush and don't go to the next switch trying to think ahead, 
and you get off of that switch, you got to throw it back the other way. All you have to do is, let me see if I can get this so we can see the two together, is hit select accessory. The number comes up, and you got to give it about a one count, and then press select accessory again. Oh, look at that. It threw. All I did was one, two. Boom. It will rethrow the last number in the machine by just pressing select accessory twice. Don't do it real fast. Okay. Got to give it a little one count in there. And then press the button a second time and it will throw it again. All right. So let's do this again and go select accessory. And we'll enter 500. And you had press 1 and it didn't move. You just said, damn, it didn't work. Well, no, that's not necessarily the case because you don't know where it is. So go back, hit that just like I did again, and then hit 2. See, it didn't run that time. So if that happens, then all you do is you hit Select Accessory, 500, Enter, and then hit 1. Now, if you go both ways, it doesn't work. We got an issue, okay? Check connections, try reprogramming it. Make sure that when you go over there and you do this with the machine, you can't move it. You, If you don't have power on this machine, and, and you should do this, if you do not have power on a, a tortoise switch machine, pick one up and, and you can push it over with your finger. Then put power on it and then try to push it. Believe me, you will not be, it, you're talking about 30, 40 pounds of force to move it. Okay, so let's uh, turn off the system. Okay, this is an example of a switch it with a th uh, throw switch to trigger it. These are pa little panels I have at the top because that's 60 inches. That's eye level for me, so my operators can't see those points right there without, you know, the camera's now at about six foot five, but they can't see the points. So I put the little panels in like this, and uh, the LEDs are driven off of tortoise machines. Just be careful. Uh, this is on a separate circuit, and those little LEDs, uh, two volts DC, and you're over the limit, babe. So. Uh, be careful with your voltage on LEDs. You can fry them real quick. That is a single pole, double throw, center off, momentary contact switch. So if I threw it that way, you saw the light go up to the top, so that's in the number one position. If I trigger it that way, it's in the number two position. Uh, Could have done this with a mini panel down here. These switches, even though they're not the being watched by the dispatcher are still hooked to, to a switch it and they do have a number uh, they just don't end up on that panel uh, on the panel which you'll see in a minute because the dispatcher this is in the dark in this part of the world so the uh, branch line operator uh, doesn't need to call the dispatcher anyway so it's just how you throw with the triggers on the back side of a switch it you cannot do this on a switch 8. On a switch 8, you have to throw it from a, the power cab, a pro cab. I'm sorry, not the power cab. The, you can do it on a power cab too, by the way. But the pro cab, this 06, the mini panel, or uh, off the dispatcher's panel, if it's going to be the, if it's going to be part of your uh, panel. So that's a little bit of how the trigger switch works. Okay, here we are at the last part. We've come in the office and we've turned on uh, Panel Pro and we've opened up the uh, My Layout. We went to Panels and we went on and opened up My Layout. Just so a point of reference here. Uh, as long as this is reading black, NCE using serial port COM3, if that's black, you're connected to the command station and JMR correctly. 
if it's red then you're not communicating you must be communicating with the command station uh, I have several videos on how to do this uh, I'm not going to get into any of that at this point just remember this needs to be black and it needs to be saying you're communicating uh, by the way also we're up to I think 6.3.7 now on the uh, JMRI sorry guys I just haven't gotten around to updating lately uh, so we'll open up this is the panel here and we'll thing I'm not going to get in today and on how to do this this is not about that uh, it's about hooking up switches and switch aids so if we go up here and we go to this switch right here I can tell you apex that's the other end to the siding that switch two well the first one is 232 and one is uh that's 232 and it's yeah 232 and that's 231 uh that is no that's 230 232 231 so if i click here that through that machine i can actually sit here and hear it running in the other room so that's one of the ways that you can throw a switch um, in the system and it is monitored. Click it, throw it back. Your ProCab controller, your 06 controller, and from a button on a mini panel, set up as a push button to make a contact on a mini panel, are the ways that you can effectively throw a switch so it's just that simple as far as the panel alright so enough on the panel I'm gonna get out of here we're gonna go here and we want to go to tables we have turnout tables, sensor tables, signal tables and all kind of other tables but we're interested in turnouts okay right here and up pops this beautiful turnout table now, big screen here, big monitor, so you get to see an awful lot of my turnouts. These are only the turnouts that are affected with that panel. Not all the turnouts in the layout, as I explained before, uh, are monitored and tracked in an, or involved in the use of the uh, panel. Now, that panel is done in layout editor. This is all done in layout editor. So here you see NT133. That's a switch on the first level and it's golden staging track 3. Everything down on the bottom level is, is um, uh, controls mainly down here at the bottom. That switch is all the way down here in this section and that's all the staging yards hard to reach switches can't get to them uh, so I have them on the panel and you can get to them by the controller so all I have to do is go click on one and they run fine so that's an example of where they are so we'll go back to the table the main point I want to make is right down here at the bottom And we talked about feedback, show feedback. So if I click here, we get all these extra little blocks over here on the side show up. And you're interested in this one right here. Feedback mode monitoring. Okay, if you see the first one, it says feedback, it'll tell you, thrown close, it'll tell you where every switch is. But to get that to work, you have to have the option monitoring checked. Okay? Just an absolute necessity. One other point I want to make on this panel. We talked about flipping the wires. Well, if you don't want to flip the wires and the switch is not in the number one position, when you hit number one, it's in the number two position, and you don't want to turn the switch machine around, <laughs> or you don't want to flip the motor wires uh, here's another cute little thing you can do you can collect the invert block see that one right there that's 
didn't work the way I wanted it to. It was throwing the, the opposite way, so I clicked the block. Now it's throwing the right way, so that's nothing. You can also go in here and lock up a switch. Um, on the panel, going back there, uh, you can go right here and you can let me see if I can get this if I got this in here I gotta find, I have to find out where I am okay here I am I can right click I'm sorry no I can't I gotta be in the edit mode I can go in the edit mode and that changed the perspective uh, let's see I can go in the edit mode and that's the wrong place let's try right here and there's the thing and it tells me all about that turnout what it is right hand turnout turnout number NT 281 disable and there you see I have the clicked disable when occupied block CP 281 why not east it's not hit okay so if I have a if that block is red no matter what you're doing you can't throw that switch can't throw it from a controller can't throw it from the dispatch panel anywhere because it's not going to allow it to happen so just one of the further steps the whole thing's tied together so we're not going to go any further we've shown you all the aspects of getting a switch it to work and uh, if you don't have uh, all the things that worked out, uh, keep working at following the steps and, and you'll eventually get it all to tie in together and uh, it'll all work for you. So let me get out of here and say end of it and uh, another episode of the uh, how-to from the Grande Pacific is completed. Thank you for watching.